Hi, I'm Carl Sagan. This is a place where I often work in Ithaca, New York, near Cornell University. Maybe you can hear in the background a 200-foot uh, waterfall, which uh, is probably, I would guess, a rarity on Mars. I don't know why you're on Mars. Maybe you're there because we've recognized we have to carefully move small asteroids around to avert the possibility of one impacting the Earth with catastrophic consequences. And while we're up in near Earth space, it's only a hop, skip, and a jump to Mars. Maybe we're on Mars because we recognize that if there are human communities on many worlds, the chances of us being rendered extinct by some catastrophe on one world is, uh, is much less. Or maybe we're on Mars because we have to be, because there is a deep nomadic impulse built into us by the evolutionary process. We come, after all, from hunter-gatherers and from 99.9% .9 of our tenure on Earth. We've been wanderers, and uh, the next place to wander to is Mars. But whatever the reason you're on Mars is, I'm glad you're there, and I wish I was with you. Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. That was Carl Sagan's message to Mars, which is on Mars. Wow. I love space exploration. I love what NASA is doing, what even SpaceX and public places are doing. Carl Sagan's a favorite of mine, a childhood hero. Rest in peace, if that means anything. I'm going to talk about the Mars Perseverance rover. That landed on February 18th. And I'm going to read off the NASA site. Maybe talk a little bit about why I like it so much or what excites me. In general, I'll put the link to the NASA site and the it's a PDF on the uh, Perseverance. And I'll put it in the description. Uh, this is from, I guess it's uh, NASA Science. Uh, Mars.nasa.gov Mission name, Mars 2020, rover name, Perseverance. Alright, so I'll go over the, uh, what I guess they call it a press kit of some sort. Over the past two decades, missions flown by NASA's Mars Exploration Program have shown us that Mars was once very different from the cold, dry planet it is today. Evidence discovered by... Landed in orbital missions point to well conditions or wet conditions billions of years ago. These environments lasted long enough to potentially support the development of microbial life. The Mars 2020 Perseverance rover is designed to better understand the geology of Mars and seek signs of ancient life. The mission will collect and store a set of rock and soil samples that could be returned to Earth in the future. It will also test new technology to benefit future robotic and human exploration of Mars. Key Objectives Explore a geologically diverse landing site. Assess ancient habitability. Seek signs of ancient life, particularly in special rocks known to preserve signs of life over time. Gather rock and soil samples, samples <laughs> that could be returned to Earth by a future NASA mission. Demonstrate technology for future robotic and human exploration. This thing's got a couple of uh, cool things on it. Um, mission timeline. Launch in July, August 2020 from Cape Canaveral Air Force, Florida. Launching uh, ULA Atlas 541 Procured under NASA's Launch Services Program. Land on Mars February 18, 2021 at the site of an ancient river delta in a lake that once filled Jezero Crater. Spend at least one Mars year, two Earth years, exploring the landing site region. 
some hardware, the key hardware. Perseverance will carry seven instruments to conduct unprecedented science and test new technology on the Red Planet. They are MastCam-Z, an advanced camera system with panoramic and stereoscopic imaging capability with the ability to zoom. The instrument also will determine mineralogy of the Martian surface and assist with rover operations, with rover operations. The principal investigator is James Bell, Arizona State University in Tempe. SuperCam, an instrument that can provide imaging, chemical composition analysis, and mineralogy at a distance. The principal investigator is Roger uh, Weens, Los Alamos National Laboratory. This instrument can also, this instrument also has a significant contribution from the Centre National of Eludes Spets. Oh, these are these France stuff. All right. Planetary Instrument for X-ray Lithochemistry, PIXL, an X-ray fluor fluorescence spectrometer and high-resolution imager to map the fine-scale elemental composition of a Martian surface materials. Pixel will provide capabilities that permit more detailed detection and analysis of chemical elements than ever before. The principal investigator is Abigail Alwood, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Scanning habitable environments with Raymond and luminescence for organics and chemicals, Sherlock. Oh boy. A spectrometer that will provide fine scale imaging and uses an ultraviolet UV laser to map mineralogy and organic compounds. Sherlock will be the first UV Raymond spectrometer to fly to the surface of Mars and will provide complementary measurements with other instruments in the payload. Sherlock includes a high resolution color camera for microscopic imaging of Mars surface. The principal investigator is Luther Beagle, JPL. The Mars Oxygen in C2 Resource Utilization Experiment, MOXIE. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fun being stoned doing these. A technologically technolo technology demonstration that will produce oxygen from Martian atmospheric carbon dioxide. If successful, Moxie's technology could be used by future astronauts on Mars to burn rocket fuel for returning to Earth. The principal investigator is Michael Hecht, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Cambridge, Massachusetts. That's cool. You're not getting ready to, you know, terraform, I guess, eventually. But, yep. Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer Meta. A set of sensors that will provide measurements of temperature, wind speed and direction, pressure, relative humidity, and dust size and shape. The principal investigator is Jose Rodriguez Manfredi, Centro Astrobaloga Institute. <laughs> Instituto Spain. The radar image from Mars subsurface experiment, RIMFAX. <sighs> A ground penetrating radar that will provide centimeter scale resolution of the geologic structure of the subsurface. The principal investigator is Sven Eric Hamann, Norwegian Defense Research Establishment in Norway. That's pretty cool. What is this? Uh, rover size and dimensions. Perseverance body and other major hardware such as the cruise stage, descent stage, and aerosol heat shield build upon the success of NASA's Curiosity rover and many other heritage components. The car size Perseverance rover has roughly the same dimensions as Curiosity. It's about 10 feet long, not including the arm, 9 feet wide, and 7 feet tall, about 3 meters long. 2.7 meters wide, 2.2 meters tall. But at 2,260 pounds, 1,025 kilograms, Perseverance is about 278 pounds heavier than Curiosity. Technology. Perseverance will also test new technology for future robotic and human missions to the Red Planet. That includes an autopilot for avoiding hazards called 
terrain relative navigation, and a set of sensors for gathering data during the landing. Mars Entry Descent Landing Instrumentation 2 or Med Lee 2. <laughs> a new autonomous navigation system will allow the rover to drive faster in challenging terrain. As with Curiosity, Perseverance's baseline power system is a multi mission radio isotope. Oh, ra radi radio isotope. Film. <laughs> So, thermoelectric generator, oh Jesus Christ, provided by the U.S. Department of Energy, it uses the heat from the natural decay of plutonium-238 to generate electricity. Wow. Uh, the Mars 2020 project is managed for NASA science mission directors, Victoria, Washington, D.C., and the headquarters. So, that's basically the, um, you know... There's also a fucking helicopter thingy that is pretty awesome. Uh, tech demo. The Mars helicopter is a technology demonstration hitching a ride. In the, this is like pretty cool. Um, this is a separate part. Uh, the helicopter rode to Mars attached to the belly of the Perseverance rover. So this little helicopter is like a little drone. And it gets powered up by the rover. But then it'll be on solar power from solar panels that has on it. I um, thought it was really cool. There's a uh, real cool thing about having the um, a drone there. The Mars Helicopter Ingenuity is a small autonomous air aircraft that will be carried to the surface of the Red Planet attached to the belly of the Perseverance rover. Its mission is experimental in nature and completely independent of the rover's science mission. In the months after the landing, the helicopter will be placed on the surface to test, for the first time ever, ever powered flight in the thin Martian air. Its performance during these experimental test flights will help inform decisions Relating to considering small helicopters for future Mars missions, where they could, where they could perform in a support role as robotic scouts surveying terrain from above, or as full standalone science craft carrying instrumental payloads. Taking to the air would give scientists a new perspective on the region's geology, and even allow them to peer into the areas that are too steep or slippery to send a rover. In the distant future, they might even help astronauts explore Mars. The project is solely a demonstration of technology. It is not designed to support the Mars 2020 Perseverance mission, which is searching for signs of ancient life and collecting samples of rock and sediment tubes uh, and sediment in tubes for potential return to Earth missions later. Uh, the key objectives for the helicopter is prove powered flight in the thin atmosphere of Mars. The red planet has lower gravity, about one third of that of Earth. But its atmosphere is just 1% as thick, making it much harder to generate lift. Demonstrate miniaturized flying technology that requires shrinking down onboard of computers, electronics, and other parts so that the helicopter is light enough to take off. Operate autonomously. Uh, Ingenuity will use solar power to charge its batteries and rely on internal heaters to maintain operational temperatures during the cold Martian nights. If the receiving commands from Earth relayed through the rover, each test flight is performed without real-time input from Mars helicopter mission controllers. This is that's pretty fucking cool. And I know it's like not adding to the mission of Mars, the Mars rover, but we need we need to start doing this. That's pretty interesting. Uh, dimensions, uh, height, nineteen inches, rotor, four feet. Um, weighs four pounds, solar powered and recharges on its own, wireless communication system, counter rotating blade spin about 2400 RPM, equipped with computers, navigation sensors, and two cameras, one color and one black and white. Uh, it's uh, project management, Mars helicopter, blah, 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 blah. all right, so. That's basically 
that on the uh, rover, uh, the, the Ingenuity helicopter. So this is a great time, I think. Uh, there was a there's a lull in um. It's you know, there's this thing about politics and you know why go to space and it gets pretty you know it's legit to somewhat on on, on all sides. This is not something like religion where I'm uh you know I've thought about it and it's been a clear line of things. Okay, I get it. You know, you spend money, you got budgets, and got to care about the people on Earth. But for me, space exploration is important. It's exciting. It fuels the wonder in us. Um, for me, it's my spirituality, and it, it's part of my spirituality. Just the wonder and awe of the universe, how things work. So now we have a planet. You know, we're going to go... Um, do some more tests on. I think that's great. I read an article also on we could probably for cheaper and quicker for some reason create floating platforms around Venus because the atmosphere is like the outer atmosphere is like Earth's atmosphere. So if we parked our little balloon, our big balloon stations there, if there was a puncture, the pressure would be just like Earth, so you could repair it. It was like a, um, I think one of those things they call out for ideas from the people in the science community or even the public. And this was one of the ideas that kind of got some momentum and some people to actually do some math on it. And it seemed pretty good. But we got Mars right now. I think it's great. Yes, I think there's a, a real debate about what's going on on the, our planet Earth how to take care of us, and the allotment of money and stuff. I get it. I'm not smart enough or savvy enough, but I do think it's important that we explore our solar system, our universe, our galaxy. And I reverse that, I guess. But Carl Sagan's message to Mars is an important one, I think. You don't know why they'll be on Mars eventually, but you can think of lots of things that would make us go to Mars. And Carl Sagan said, maybe we're going out deterring um, asteroids from hitting Earth and we're using Mars as a staging ground. Uh, maybe we want to protect our uh, race, our society, so we're on more planets. It, it makes sense. And if you're going to go the long game and think to yourself, okay, so we're going to survive for billions of years as a race. What's going to happen? Well, the sun's going to burn out, right? There is no. Stopping that unless in these millions and billions of years up to then we can figure out a way to fix it, right? So let's just say we have a technology in a million years that reignites our sun. Fine. We'll probably be okay. Put defense platforms up, whatever. But if we can't, we're going to have to, even if we have to create generational ships, because uh, light speed is not as fast as we would like it to be in the scheme of the universe if we were to leave earth at light speed we might get out of the galaxy in two and a half years that's just a galaxy that's just i mean it's just insane so yes we might have to go and spread across the universe um reach new plateaus of technology and ingenuity uh the perseverance to keep going we're going to have to find maybe even a new universe. That's where it could lead to if you're playing the long game. But for now, I do understand the the sides of things like this. Like NASA's uh, plus, keep, take, care, take care of Earth. I get it, you know. And, and especially now, pandemic, uh, new president in America, whatever. Shit going on around the world. We're not at a level, I thought, at, since I'm 50 now. That I thought we would be at. I thought we would have a better understanding of each other. And our place in the universe. But you can't do much about that. Except maybe turn on my mic and talk about science. Talk about things that interest me. My favorite movies and such. And this is how I'm, you know, diverting some of my energy into certain aspects. I hope people enjoy it. This was a fun thing to do. I get real excited about exploration of space. I did a little talk there about you know why i think it's uh at least 
something to understand why there are two sides, like we shouldn't be exploring space and we should be taking care of Earth. I get it. So in that, I look forward to talking about it. And let's hope for exploration. Let's find new discoveries. Hope everybody's doing well. Be safe out there. Take care. And be well.